If you want a vehicle that is the all-around best off-roader, there's really only one brand to go to, and that's Jeep. You need a Wrangler in your life, or a Gladiator if you want to put stuff in the back, but maybe you want to have a bit of different fun off-road. Maybe you want to go to the desert, or maybe you want to jump things. This is the one you need. This is the Jeep Gladiator Mojave, and it's the automaker's first ever desert-rated vehicle. So Jeep's been doing the trail rated thing for years now. It means their vehicle is capable of handling the trail. This is the first desert rated vehicle from Jeep. And what that means is it's up for a bit more of a high speed adventure. It still has all the great low speed trail abilities of other Wranglers, but it's more suited to being out bashing some dunes. So how did they do that? Well, up front in the nose, Jeep raised the suspension by an inch and that was to clear space for the new Fox 2.5 shocks and those come with a remote reservoir with an internal bypass system what that does is dissipate heat better for the damping and doesn't reduce the ability of the shocks it lets them keep doing their job even if they're being repeatedly abused out back there's another set of fox 2.5s for the rear as well this seems like it's set up similar to the rubicon but the big difference here is that this doesn't get the crazy low crawling gear that the rubicon gets the four to one crawling gear this gets the other 2.72 to one that the other jeeps get so it's still able to crawl it's still a better crawler than most other off-road vehicles out there it's just not as insane as the rubicon but where it really picks up and stays true to its name is in this button down here, which is off-road mode. So if I hit that, let me stop for a second. I'm gonna put it into four high. Pull the transfer case, shift selector back. It says tracks control on because I had it off. So I'm gonna hit this off-road button. Now, a page is popping up over here. This is a very good infotainment system and this is the only time it's sluggish is when it's moving to the off-road pages. But they popped up, they're populating, it's still loading. Okay, so now I can see my pitch, my roll. There's a trail cam button. This has cameras front and rear and I can select between the two. Turn that off. In the drivetrain mode, I can see what my steering angle is. It tells me that the transfer case is now in four high. It actually gives me my longitude, my latitude and my altitude, which is pretty awesome. And then if you want, you can lock the rear axle. To do that, you gotta switch to four low though. With the Rubicon, you can run with the rear axle locked for up to 30 miles per hour. Here on the Mojave, you can do it up to 50 miles per hour. That's a huge difference, especially in off-road speed. Oh, you can feel it wanting to be clunky as I'm turning around here, but that makes sense because the rear axle is locked. When you start locking things, it doesn't love turning because both rear wheels want to turn at the same speed, but they're on a different, they're on a solid axle. And so normally the inside wheel wants to turn less, the outside wheel has to turn faster to keep up. Here they're locked, which is why you get some of that chunkiness when it's turning. This would be very useful though, getting through some sand, getting through some mud, getting through some dirt, and you can do it more quickly in the Mojave. But I'm gonna stop for a second. I'm gonna go back to neutral. I'm gonna pop it to four high. Give it a second. And I'm actually gonna go all the way to two and turn the traction control off. And now the rear axle is unlocked. Now this is the mode that I find the most entertaining because you can get into some great slides. You can have a lot of fun in too high with traction control off. And that's kind of the aim here on the Mojave is to have something that competes against the likes of the Colorado ZR2 and the Ford Raptor. Now it competes against them in terms of the goal, the intended goal of the vehicle where it's just higher speed off-road fun. It doesn't compete as well in all areas. The suspension is fantastic. Though the Raptor has the edge with its Fox Live Valve technology, which is constantly monitoring exactly what is going on at every corner and adjust as needed. And then on the flip side, Chevy's ZR2, the Colorado ZR2, has the Multimatic spool valve damper suspension, which is amazing. This is just a really good solution for this truck to turn it into more of a desert runner. It's not the best of the three, but it is good. And then again, when you're pushing it, the Raptor once again has the edge here because it has that awesome higher horsepower EcoBoost motor. This has the 3.6 liter V6 engine. And it's the only one you can get on the Mojave and I think that's a bit of a shame. Now I don't want the diesel one in the Mojave. That's a great engine, but I don't think it would do well here. The turbo four cylinder though, that one would do really well because that one feels great off the line. The turbo spools up instantly. It has great torque. It has better torque than this 3.6 liter gas engine. So why did I say I'd pick the turbo four over the V6? 
Well, let's take a look and see what this V6 is. This is the 3.6 liter. It makes 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. And that sounds okay, but then you remember this thing weighs about 5,000 pounds. It's heavy. The engine feels more taxed than I remember it feeling in other Jeep Wrangler applications. And I feel like the Turbo 4 might do a better job of getting this thing around town. And even though it's a smaller engine, it's a very good engine with some great power figures. I feel like this is due for an update. You can choose between gearboxes though. This one has the eight speed automatic and there's an available six speed manual gearbox. Now hear me out on this, get the eight speed. The manual in the Jeep Wrangler is not great. The clutch uptake and feel is very vague. The shifter is kind of sloppy. It's just not a very good manual gearbox. And that's a bummer because normally I would say get the manual, not here. The eight speed is absolutely the way to go in the Jeep. So I had to pull over for a minute because I want to talk to you about another sticking point of the Gladiator Mojave. The base price of this is $43,000, and that's not terrible for something this capable. It's comfortable inside, it can go anywhere you need it to go, and you can have a lot of fun with it. As tested though, this one is $62,000. And now we are venturing into Ford Raptor country, and that's a problem because that is substantially more vehicle. I really like this at $44,000, $43,000. I don't love it at $62,000. I think if you can find it somewhere in the sweet spot, maybe high 40s, low 50s, you're getting a good deal on a Gladiator Mojave. 62 though, that's a lot. Do you need this fancy hard top? Do you need to pay for the 8.4 inch screen on the Uconnect system? Well, kind of, you kind of need that screen because it is a nice upgrade. And then the rest of it is debatable from there. You could also have an argument that you buy a lower trim version and then you add on upgrades down the road because every Jeep owner knows you're gonna modify these things anyway. So there's the balance. Do you wanna get it fully out the door, full factory warranty, get all the good stuff and be ready to go for $62,000 or maybe save a little and then spend more down the road? And because it is still a Wrangler, and even though it says desert rated on the side, it's still really good at running trails at slower speeds. Over this past weekend, I took it on a local trail up here and climbed to the top of one of these mountains in inland Orange County. And my daughter was in the back seat and we just, we had a good time. We were comfortable. This thing was capable. I never, I actually just kept it in too high most of the time. Uh, except to climb one little section that was just really fun just to show my daughter we could do it. Um, and that was it, lumbering over that. It's comfortable, but if you wanna floor it, you can do that too. It's very playful. It's a very playful version of the Gladiator. On the inside, this one is fitted with the optional 8.4 inch Uconnect system, which besides the sluggishness of getting to the off-road pages, works really well. It pairs to phones quickly. It's easy to see. It responds well to touch applications. The seats are upgraded a little bit with more bolstering to keep you in check and they have this cool Mojave script. On the outside you'll see that Mojave trim continued by the normally red tow hooks for these more off-road oriented Jeeps. These ones are painted orange. Though this wears the same wheel and tire package as the Rubicon. So you get 17 inch wheels and you get those 33 inch Falcon Wild Peak tires. So at its core it is a very useful, very capable, wonderful Jeep Gladiator. You add the Mojave name to it, and it's ready for a bit more fun in the desert. Does it compete with the Raptor? In a way. Will it lose if we were out racing through Baja? Yes, definitely. But does that matter to Jeep buyers? I don't think so.